this is Angelic Lulu, and I'm going to do a let's play on the Yog. So, this is a game that has amazing music, as you can hear, but it also is just a little storytelling game. It's fairly quick, but there's a lot of different endings, a lot of different ways you can change the story. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick two characters here. So you could have all characters, and you could have different people playing the characters, or you can play all four characters. The Yog will be here in six weeks, and no one expects it, not a one of us. We just keep on living our lives week by week, unaware. Alright, so my first character, I'm going to pick where they're going to go and build up some stats. Um, I'm going to make this character more of a healer type, so I'm going to have them go to the gardens first. They're going to meditate. You spend the week in deep meditation. You gain one magic and two mind. One day a toothless old woman approaches you. I have a small pouch of magic beans. Would you be interested in purchasing them? Well, I don't have any money, so I can't purchase them, so I'm gonna say no thanks. She walks away disappointed. There's no such thing as magic beans, you mutter to yourself. You gain one mind. Alright, and here's my other character. I'm gonna make them more of a fighter type. down a set of stairs. You enter a large dusty room filled with barrels. You found the king's famous wine cellar. I'm going to go ahead and I think keep quiet about what I saw. Just knowing you have a secret to hide is so exciting. You gain one charm and one mind. They say the last time it came, the yog devoured houses whole, stole lives, tore families and family members apart, but that was so very long ago. Alright, for the second week I have my character, I'll take them to the hospital to tend to patients. You spend the week diagnosing and tending to the sick. You gain two mind and earn one wealth. One day a patient whose voice has been cursed and replaced with piano notes will not stop talking. All the other patients are complaining that his voice is making the hospital even more depressing. The doctors have tried convincing him to stop talking, but to no avail. So I can try to decipher what he's saying or sing with him. I think I'm going to sing with him. You start trying to sing along with his voice. You try to sing along with him, but just can't hit the right notes. His sound gets progressively sadder and sadder. It starts driving you slightly mad. You lose one mind. Alright, in here with my fighter character, we'll go to the forest and we'll chop some wood. You spend the week cutting down trees for the village. You gain two physique and earn yourself one wealth. One day you come across a group of people in the woods. From the expressions on their faces, they appear to be lost. I'm going to go ahead and help them out. You confront the group and try to help them find their way back to town. With ease, you lead everyone back to town. Extremely grateful, the group gives you a small token of their appreciation. You gain two wealth. It was on us in a heartbeat, or so the stories go. The earth shook, the air went still. Alright, with my healer character, they'll go to Alpha Tower and they'll brew potions. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day you hear cries for help coming from the next room. Running over to investigate, you see that the alchemists there have accidentally created an ooze monster. Boy, I hate when that happens. How do you dispatch the ooze? Well, I'm probably going to have to use my magic since I don't have much to punch with. You 
pulverize the ooze into a puddle with an array of magical spells. The alchemist all cheer. You gain one charm. Alright. I don't know how you punch an ooze monster anyways. I think your fist would get stuck. Um, let's have our fighter character go to the slums and fight some crime. You spend the week outsmarting and beating up criminals. Criminals. You gain one mind, one physique, and one finesse. Hey. One night, you hear a woman whisper at you from nearby. Mm, blood dripping from the lips there, I'm not so sure. Hey you, she calls out, looking to make a bit of coin. I think I'm okay with my coin. Despite your attention to say no, you find yourself giving in to her will completely. Uh oh. She, she sneaks single signals you, for you to go into the alleyway with her. Come closer, she says. Nobody else can hear what I'm about to tell you. You lean in close, eager to learn how you'll be earning this coin. She presses herself right up against you, moving her lips slowly towards your ear. Suddenly, she bites your neck viciously. Boy, I didn't see that one coming. Blood pours from the wound, and she clings to you tightly, lapping it all up. You black out. When you come to, you st see her standing over you. Thanks, she says, tossing you a couple coins. You gain one wealth. She then melts into the shadows. When you feel your neck, you notice your wound wound has healed completely. Your body feels ice cold. You gain three charms. And then the world was a howling fury, chaos screaming, the sound of all we knew being pulled in half. Alright, with my healer character, they shall... Choices, choices. Let's go to the tavern. Let's see what we can do there. Well, we can bartend or drink. I think my character is going to want to bartend. Spend the week serving drinks at the tavern. You earn one wealth and tips and gain two charm. One day a bard pulls out his lute in the bar and starts playing a tune. Unfortunately his singing is horrible and it's ruining the tavern's atmosphere. You decide to do something about it. Well I can try to convince him to leave or challenge him to a lute duel. Um, let's see. I think I watched. I did so well with the singing with the piano man. Challenge him to a loot duel. You borrow the bar owner's loot and challenge the bard to a musical duel. You only just start playing the loot when you realize that you're even worse than the bard. The bard easily outplays you and motions for you to lay down your loot. You can tell there are a couple people snickering at you right now. Embarrassing. You lose one charm. I'm not doing too good this game. Alright. Let's go to the arena. Let's compete in a fight. You spend the week fighting brutes in the arena. You gain two physique and one finesse. Over the course of the week, you've noticed your skin become paler and your teeth sharper. You notice that what it, whenever you talk, everyone nearby hangs on your every word. You gain three charm. Wow, I'm gonna be the most charming person ever. Or am I a person? You also feel more frail and gaunt than you used to. You lose three physique. I don't think I'm going to do well with the physique anymore. One day you notice a woman tilting her head back, brushing her hair, her neck fully exposed. You can even see a vein or two. Delicious. Before you know it, you're coated in blood with a mangled form in front of you. There are dozens of people around, and they're all filled with delicious nectar. <laughs> Few hours are a blur. You wake up the next day in your bed sheets soaked with blood that's not your own. You look in the mirror and notice your skin has regained its color and that your teeth have dulled. When it arrives this time, how will we fare? Will what we once more rebuild, move on, be strong, or have we forgotten? Alright, my healer character. Um, let's see. Your mind's ten. Magic's eight, so let's go back to the alchemy tower and brew some more potions. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day, an artificer stops by for a visit. 
She is adorned with magical gadgets and gizmos and is followed everywhere by her clockwork spider. The alchemists of the tower all go out of their way to impress the artificer, offering her an array of potions and elixirs. As she's leaving, she adorns the most charming of the alchemists with a special trinket. The fact that she didn't choose you was a very humbling experience. You gained one charm. Interesting. Alright. My vampire of a hero. Not so heroic anymore. Let's go to the slums. And I think we'll fight some crime. That worked out so well last time. You spend the week outsmarting and beating up criminals. You gain one mind, one physique, and one finesse. One night, a man walks up to you. I probably eat him. Excuse me, sir, feeling a little lonely tonight? Yes. For only a small amount of coin, I can make you feel good all night. Hmm. I don't know about that. Why not? I can maybe eat him. Let's go, sure. You hand him over a small sack of coins. You lose two well. On your way to your house, you start about talking, philosophy, history, magic, everything really. The two of you have an amazing conversation that goes well into the morning. You gain two mind and two charm. Man apologizes for the lack of sex, but thanks you for the chat. Well, the way, kitty. He re refunds you back half of what you spent. Yay! You gain one well. The Yog, it's almost here. Almost. Almost. Alright. We have some ominous things going on here. Um. I'll go meditate a little bit. How about that? You spend the week in deep meditation. You gain one magic and two mind. One day a beggar comes up to you asking for any spare change. to a letter of the alphabet. Deciphering the code points you to a small trap door hidden in a back alley. You descend it to find a dimly lit room with two cubes hovering off the ground, text scribbled across them. Hmm. The arcane or the gallon? Let's go with the gallon. You touch the cube labeled the gallon. Everything flashes white. You wake up at home feeling Odd. You gain three charm. I'm the most charming person ever. The storm arrives in the night. By the morning, it still rages. For three full days, the tempest puts us through a grinder. Drowns us, crushes us, ruins us. But then it ends. We see the graveyard our home has become. Our home. Does anything yet live? Is it? Are we past saving? Now you take your character, look at their stats, and kind of choose a role for them. Since this character is more mind and magic, um, I'm going to want to think of something that would do with using the mind and magic. Uh, I could do a conjurer or a doctor, I think. Um, I'm going to go with doctor. You take it upon yourself to help the sick and injured from the yacht. Despite your vast medical knowledge, your hands are too shaky to save some patients. You lose a few, but manage to save most of them. This helps the survival effort quite a bit. Alright, now with my very charming person. Um, let's see. Um, maybe I'll make them the leader because they're so charming they can tell people what to do. 
no. <laughs> you take it upon yourself to be the leader of the survivors. You expertly delegate and prioritize tasks. You give motivating speeches and act as an effective mediator in disputes. This helps the rebuilding effort significantly. And so, we set about our task once more living our lives, this time in a way we might never have expected or even wanted. But in the end, let's see how I ended. It was a struggle, but a struggle we never abandoned. Though our home had been stripped apart, we did not let it languish. And whether we succeed or fail, we did our best. Who knows if the Yogg will visit us again? Who knows if we will ever be, can ever be, ready for it? my characters made out this time. While the town is being rebuilt, you spend more and more time in the Alchemy Tower. Your potion brewing abilities quickly become among the best in the world. Your health and mana potions are considered world-class delicacy with people venturing far and wide to buy them. But you never learn how to brew a love potion. While the town is being rebuilt, you decide to celebrate. You organize a huge festival in honor of the bravery that helped save so many lives. The first one is so successful, you decided to make it an annual t tradition. Every year, the festival gets bigger and more elaborate, and every year it costs more and more money to put on. You have to start charging admission, and no one is happy about it. The annual festival slowly fades out of relevance, and before long is canceled completely. You don't really know what to do with your life after all that. I guess we're not going to address the whole vampire issue. Well, this was The Yogg. It's a quick, fun story game, and I had never seen that vampire situation, so that was a new experience for me. Um, every time you have different little things going on, so you can play it over and over again. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, Let's Play of the Yogg. It's on Steam, uh, fairly cheap, and I hope uh, you'll visit my next one.